way to uh, compress that to one slide? Um, Gentlemen, welcome to the San Diego Inventors Forum. Thank you. You're here. You're here. You're here. Yay! Oh, that's right. We got new screens. Oh yes, bouncing back and forth. Yes, we have cameras now and live and all this good stuff. Okay, uh, let's get started here. Um, actually, we do actually have some breaking news. This uh, gentleman is the uh, director of the Chamber of Commerce. And he spoke out yesterday and made a statement that's the most positive thing I've heard anybody from the U.S. Patent Office say in the last 10 years. If you've been following and listening to uh, our concerns about the patent system, well, uh, when we finally change administrations, Michelle Lee, who was the ex-head of Google IP, who was appointed to be the head of the U.S. Patent Office, finally stepped down after a few months of controversy and was replaced by this gentleman here. And this gentleman is in fact saying, uh, we will not continue down the same path. We have finally made enough of an impact that things are about to change and come back in our favor. So let's go, yay. All the work you'll hear about later that our, our groups have put into getting something to change. It's, it's finally great news to see this. So back to our regularly scheduled program. This is uh, time to thank our supporters. We thank Amen Healthcare for having us here. Give them a little hand and a shout out. And there's the only ones we're gonna have to give a shout out for. Coleman University hosts us when it's time for our invention contest. We'll see them this year, I believe. We're gonna have to go back because of the size of it. Uh, unfortunately, Leslie couldn't make it very last minute. She's with Jack in the Box. She's helped host us as well there, the Jack in the Box headquarters. Uh, A-Square Technology is the main sponsor here. That's a product development company. I'll tell you more about in a second. We're not here tonight. Our, our, uh, Bigger supporter is uh, David Waller and uh, Bob Green with PowerPack. Uh, we have some other people here that are some uh, supporters, so we give shouts out to. Our contributors are listed here. You see uh, we have authors and videographers, and these are the people closest to our group here that help us out the most. Uh, Graznia is our webmaster. Uh, Jennifer Joe has been ill for the last month, but she'll be back. And uh, Dave Swift and Alejandro, thank you very much, Dave, for being here tonight. I'm um, Adrian Pelkus. Uh, my company, Square Technologies, which is the biggest sponsor here, is a product design development firm that we started in 1985. A Squared is Amy and Adrian, if you're wondering. Uh, I am, like many of you, uh, an inventor. This is my garage, so when I'm not doing something serious, or maybe I am, I'm in here, I'm putzing, I'm putzing, I'm making things explode, or maybe they work, and anything in between. Yeah. The uh, end result is, uh, yes, our product development firm, firm has been around over 30 years, uh, over 300 products. Uh, some of them you might recognize if your shopping cart wheel locks up, I put the first cable around a shopping center and fired that up. Voice activated switches, genetic tools, aerospace equipment, calculators, the uh, lot of medical things, energy, renewable energy things. The things I'm most recognized for is the baby doll, the infant simulator. Uh, called Baby Think It Over. Uh, Mid-90s, it was a Fortune 19 product of the year. Over a million kids have used it now in home ec class. And uh, old school way was you had to take an egg or flour and everybody cheated. You can't cheat anymore. Uh, so along the way, uh, I've now acquired 15 patents for all kinds of different things. And uh, along the way, I won some awards. Uh, my most recent were uh, for things that are actually going to Mars. Uh, a mood adjuster, a, a way to uh, center sand, uh, and uh, a, a personal transport vehicle were some of the things I had entered. Um, it's actually leading to a startup. Uh, actually, just this week, I stood up to be the CEO of, and uh, that means I'm now officially absorbed. Uh, I'm also on the board of a couple of great groups to help inventors, the United Inventors Association and U.S. Inventor, of which I'll tell you more about in a minute. And uh, our whole point of getting things together is to keep America's economy growing because we are the job creators, right? Uh, 
The U.S. patent system has been the greatest job creator in the history of mankind. So we're very proud to have a part of that. So, what is new, guys? Who's new? Raise your hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'd like you to introduce yourself if you're into it. Tell us uh, what your area of interest is, not the whole life story here, just uh, uh, what you're doing and what you're interested in, and then you'll have another chance to get introduced a little bit further later. But who wants to start? Introduce yourself. We like to know who's here, and people of similar interests always gather together. So let's start here. Wonderful. Thank you. Stand here. Yes, that's fine. Hi, everyone. My name's Jared Raven. Uh, my product I invented was uh, Christmas Hangomatic, um, and working on Hangomatic in six countries. Now my wife and I spend a lot of our time helping inventors and educating them to avoid things that her and I were did not avoid when we were going through the process. So thanks for having me. What is Hangomatic? What kind of thing? Hangomatic is a, a picture hanging tool to mark the wall so you know where to put your, your nail, your screws when you when you're hanging anything on the wall. And make them level. And make it level. <laughs> it looks it kind of looks like a modified tape measure. Very good. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you for being here. Great to see you guys. Welcome to the group. Who else? First time tonight. Tell us what you're working on and what your passion is. Um, my name is George Manos. Hi, George. And uh, I'm working on an invention right now that uh, is a cooking device for a microwave oven that does it all. Okay. It's, uh, I mean, you cook omelets with it, hamburgers with it, uh, all kinds of stuff. But anyway, awesome. I'm looking for to put a team together to get this thing going. Okay. I'm turning 81 years old tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to need some big time help. You know, at the end of this program here, we have this called Who Needs Who, and we're going to come right back to that, and you're going to stand up again and say what it is you need, and hopefully you can get some people attracted to you. What stage are you at? Do you have a patent pending yet, or have you made a prototype yet? What do they call it when it's a worldwide patent? PTC. Yeah. Okay. And have you made a working model yet? I've got a prototype. Excellent. Excellent. I've been cooking with it. All right. For almost a year and a half. I went from 260 pounds down to 187. Wait a minute, because the pan doesn't work right? No. <laughs> it's <pan> working great. <laughs> okay. Good. Just like Even that. better. Thank you, George. Wonderful. Wonderful. Who else is next? Who else? Who wants to be next? You first. Me. My name is Alberto, and I have two software app ideas ah. coming up, and I have papers lying everywhere in the garage, and my parents actually trying to throw it all away, so I figured oh. it's time to actually come here and actually start uh, patting it. I also have a couple other ideas, but really I'm just here to learn and see what I can get from, oh. from this stuff. Excellent. Well, perfect. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad you, what's your first name again? Alberto. Alberto. Yay, Alberto. What's maps? Uh, you gave me a flashback when I was a kid. I had the messiest desk in the world, and one day my dad just went, that's enough, and did one of these, just tilt the desk and let everything go into the trash can type of thing. Yeah, it taught me a few things about how to store things a little differently and <laughs> keeping things neat. Actually, a sign of a clean desk is a, a clean desk is a sign of a sick mind. You gotta have them cluttered, you gotta be busy. You gotta be noisy, too, I realize that. Thank you for introduction. Yes, my friend. My name is Jay Gordon, and I'm a retired patent lawyer turned entrepreneur, and I didn't invent anything other than some very strong trademarks and were licensed by the National Institutes of Health to study CBD for Alzheimer's wow. and another, a number of other conditions. Uh, Salk is putting this stuff together. I'm way over my head. <laughs> what is your name again? Jay. Jay Gordon. Jay. Pleasure meeting you. Welcome here. Welcome here. I guess it's weird not to introduce myself since I'm with my husband. <laughs> I'm Karina Raven and I invented the pitch to get rich.com, which is a free website where you guys can visit. Um, I helped Jared sell the product to 12,000 retailers. I blog how to get into Ace Hardware, how to get into Walmart how to talk to buyers, how to find buyers, how to sell buyers. So we just put out free content that you guys could 
Follow. Awesome. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I'm glad you're here because there's a lot of work being done right now to unite the whole community, I'll tell you about this in a minute, and the reputable service providers and promote them and we're creating a whole system to do that. I'll tell you about that in a minute, but it's a great time for you to be here and thank you for coming and contributing. Thank you very much. Yes, my friend. My name is Dave Fody and I like to fish. And so I like I, to eat fish. Huh? I like to eat fish. Okay. Uh, I invented a, a safety gag, and I have a patent for it. And um, I, I'm at this point where I've got uh, about 250 units out being used right now. They've been out for about five years, but I'm broke. <laughs> that, well, one thing can lead to another. You know, inventing, invention is not a get-rich-quick uh, scheme. To find out some more information about what I can do. Oh, I'm sure there's, well, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, invention is not a get rich quick scheme for many of you, it's a get poor slow scheme or even get poor fast scheme. <laughs> but uh, a few good plans and thoughts ahead can help prevent those. As somebody who's actually almost reaching 60 has never caught a fish in his life, what's a gap do? It's for deep sea fishing when you have to, you're in a boat and you try to get this big fish onto the onto the boat. It's got it's a hand it's a handle with a hook on. It. Oh, okay. And it pulls it up. Oh, okay. Mine, the hook bends into the uh, handle and uh, prevents people from getting stabbed by it if it's laying around. Oh, that sounds like a good thing. Okay, awesome, very cool. Thanks for explaining. I will be catching fish soon. I actually. Uh, I have a whole series of experiments. I need to go out and my ruse is going to be, I'm going to pretend I'm fishing. <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens. Next, who's, who's near here? Thank you, my friend from Orange County, please. Uh, Steve, I'm a medical device uh, mechanical engineer and I'm working on a device with a pack, uh, a device with an app that works for physical therapy patients. That's, that's it. Very cool, very cool. And a, thank you, thank you. Thank you as well. Uh, and a guest from our Orange County, our sister up in Orange County, uh, the Orange County Inventors Forum. Um, so we're glad to have you here. Glad to have you here. Anybody else? First time tonight? Josh? Uh, my name is, oh. oh, please go ahead. Yeah, my name is Fernando. Uh, I developed a construction tool. Uh, I have oh. no idea what to do at this point. So I just wow. Figure out what the next. You made it. You made it work. And uh, yeah. Okay. Did you patent or file anything yet? I'm not. I haven't even started that. Okay. We'll tell you the whole. We'll tell you the whole process. You're at the right place. Okay. Yeah. Josh. Just, uh, briefly, you're going to hear from me tonight. My name is Joshua Schoonover. I'm a patent attorney. I'm also running for Congress in District 49 at Stans Del Mar, to South Orange County. Uh, tonight, I'll be talking a little bit about patents and also my candidacy for Congress. Um, so yes, more information to come. Thank you, thank you, Josh. Thanks for being here. Uh, and to know that we are a completely fair and open organization, uh, Doug Applegate has not responded to my request that he come and talk to us. We actually sponsored him last year, but what we're trying to do is defeat ISO. So now it's a matter of finding somebody who's got the sensibilities that uh, we're looking for. And uh, I thank you to, I've already previewed your presentation. I'm happy you're here. Thank you. Who else is here tonight, first time? Want to say a chat? Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for coming. What I'm going to do now in the next few minutes, those of you that have been here a few times, you've seen this. This is for the ones that are here for the first time tonight. Uh, our group here is a 51C3, and our mission is to motivate, educate, and network you. And we have a schedule. This is a, basically like an itinerary where every month is a different subject that is relevant to your path to bringing a product to market. There's different paths. There's shorter paths if you're licensing. It's a much longer path if you're starting a business. Um, and then with each one of these meetings, there's a speaker that uh, comes with experience of that of that subject that night. So over the years, tremendous speakers uh, from all across town, uh, and our dear friend Michelle tonight. Um, Michelle is not just a speaker, she's uh, a political activist and a very passionate patriot, uh, a member of the Coalition for Prosperous America. She's been helping fight the TPP and, and now working to, uh, what are you working on lately, okay. Michelle? Eliminate the trade deficit <clears throat> we have, and also a pr proposal for um, 
keeping um, com Chinese companies from buying American companies uh -huh. and okay. expanding the Committee on Foreign Investment rules as well as uh, tax proposals and addressing currency manipulation. Very important things. Uh, I have a Your manufacturing books? summit next Okay, week. please. Okay, next Wednesday in uh, San Marcos at the San Marcos Community Center, we're having a manufacturing summit where we have, um, we talk other policies that would rebuild American manufacturing. So it starts at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning and we have a continental breakfast and we serve a box lunch and it goes to 1 o'clock. So it's only $35. So I have flyers if you want to, go, want to come. Thank you. Michelle is also one of the leading experts in town on manufacturing. As a rep for a number of companies, uh, she's the person to go to if you're wondering what a manufacturing pro what manufacturing process you might need to create your product in high bulk and content. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, so yes, every month we'll have different uh, people come and talk, different contributors. Uh, Judy has written a book about marketing. Uh, her husband does some amazing focus group work for high level companies. If you ever needed a very professionally writ written uh, focus group report. This is one of the man, best men in town to go to. Uh, we bring in inventors that have succeeded and they come back and they tell their stories and we love that. That's what motivates people. They were sitting here and many of them are just brand new on the path and then we bring in people that have been there, done that and come back and share the, 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 whole, the trials and tribulations. So uh, every month is a different inventor and we get to catch up with them and find out where they're, where they're at along the path. We've had uh, a great series of uh, presenters here and do every year. We're quite fortunate. Um, the uh, uh, guests also include some experts in the field. Of course, if you remember uh, Lewis Foreman uh, with in Edison Nation. All these have been captured. Uh, we now have a couple of different videographers, but the gentleman that was with us for the longest time was Sidney Wildsmith. Dave is with us now. Thank you, Dave, for the videography work. Appreciate that. And we've actually combined forces here, and Danny Galley, I'll introduce you as well right now, is our lead audiovisual engineer. So Danny is pulling it all together for us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, all of our videos on our YouTube channel, there's over, uh, I think, 150. We've had over 150,000 views on them, and they're all free, all in high def. And these are the videos of some of the best speakers we could find in town. So. That's a great asset for you. Uh, Sidney himself is a very passionate uh, videographer, a naturalist, artist, and he created a page called, uh, well, a website called Inventors TV. And Inventors TV is to be a resource, it's a portal for you to see all the videos from all the clubs once we get them united, which we're going to work on this next weekend. Uh, meanwhile, you have news available, uh, you have the resources channel. Uh, the affiliates are all the different clubs, such as ourselves, and we have been sponsored by uh, PowerPack. The uh, idea is to have all this information that's available on videos all in one place, one stop. So this is going, it's growing, I invite you to uh, check it out, and uh, hopefully you'll find a lot of resources and great information there. And then add to it, you'll see it's a, an open source for us to uh, combine things. Okay. Uh, Let's go into our next feature here. Yeah, well, this is, uh, we didn't have an inventor of the month this month. Uh, I had actually in the schedule told you that we were gonna talk about the 17 mistakes. Um, I'm gonna give you a link to that in just a minute because that's gonna make it a lot easier. That's 38 minutes. And again, there's 25,000 views on that and a lot of people have written me saying how thankful they were to see somebody talk honest, so uh, I'll give you that link in just a second. But right now, let's ask you, what's new with you? Did anybody have a good accomplishment in the last month you want to share with us? Let's, uh, okay, let's start there. Hello. So we're not so inventive, but we're trying to be entrepreneurial, and um, we um, went ahead with a, with a franchise, a newspaper for uh, Escondido and San Marcos, and it's all just trivia and puzzles and uh, good news and opportunities for, to support small businesses to give them a 
digital type of an advertise. So this is this is actually our prototype. We've been working on this for several months without a prototype printed, and now we can use this to go into businesses and say, mm -hmm. well, put this in your waiting room. Right. So that's a real step for us. Getting it launched. Awesome. Getting something launched. That's a great step. And who's next? Who received a who filed for a patent last month? Anybody? I went non-provisional. You filed a non-provisional. Yeah, awesome. That's I how you start. A year ago. Oh. And kept making changes. Okay. <laughs> and on the very, very last day. Yeah. So she's got connections. Thank God she didn't get hit by a truck, right? So. Okay. Last day went non-provisional. So that means no more changes. And the patent office will actually look at it. Uh, so, big bucks. Well, they don't look at provisionals. They just file them and send you a receipt saying they filed it. <laughs> well, hopefully they'll look at it. No, never. never. The only time they're going to look at your provisional is when you file the actual application for the patent. Every word that you wrote has to still be valid for that well, provisional. Yeah. Well, it expires within a year, so it's a good well, thing. No, and then we send it to the non-provisional. Sorry. Yeah, no. So, um, Excuse me. You're, uh, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. And it's a utility patent. I misunderstood. I misread you. I'm so sorry. Great. Wordy. Great, great. What's the subject matter? It's a patio umbrella. Patio umbrella. I was here once, just once before. So. Okay. All right. I have the uh, pretty well developed <coughs> prototype with right. 3D printing parts. Great. Uh, I was going to make a place with. Uh, yeah. And ran into this guy. Yeah. And they just weren't keeping up their 3D printers. So I finally bought my own. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, that makes it a lot more available, doesn't it? A lot more available. <laughs> Very cool. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yeah, all these are little steps, but they're, they're milestones. They really are. They're huge. Thank you. Who's next? Want something to share? You're smiling like a Cheshire cat, Sia. What's new in your zoo? Awesome. Uh, my name is Sia. Uh, some of you guys might already know me. I was a Kickstarter, a successful Kickstarter, and I have a remote control for window blinds. You turn your current blind into a remote very quickly. After two years of being in Amazon and setting up website, now we're trying to get a whole lot bigger. As a result, this month, we're going to have a um, equity crowdfunding going. Oh, so, very cool. Uh, so far, they valued the company at 3.5 million. There you go. That'll get some investors in. From scratch in here and getting into that in two, two and a half years later, it's wonderful. And uh, so look us up. I will give you the information later. Uh, and some people who want to invest. Now's the time. Exactly. Series. It's a Reg D or is it a Reg? Uh, what do you mean? The investment round. It's a Reg D. Is it called or is it a? Do you know? You said it's social uh, equity it's crowning. It's a place called the Start Engine, and uh, so later on I'll send you all the link and everything. Mm -hmm. Right now we just got approved by SEC, so. Uh, so you can bring in non-accredited investors? Correct. All right, so you can bring in a thousand investors at even a thousand dollars each, isn't that it? Um, well, we're making it correct. Uh, you could get it with any amount in Viber, our minimum uh -huh. is going to be about 350. Okay. Ah, very easy, very easy entry. Hey, see ya. What a great trip, great story, great progress. Yes, I'm very fortunate. I've met many of you were right at the beginning when the prototype was in the cardboard tube and you had to hold it just right so it would work. And <laughs> not that yours was in that state, but yours was in an even earlier state. It was concept. So it's wonderful to see you progress all the way this, through this and brought it to market and getting such a value. That's great. Anybody else? What you made? What's happened? Well, I didn't get a patent because you can't patent. CBD, I call my HPD. I got a issue for hempidile, mm. which is my equivalent of cannabidiol to differentiate mm. CBD from hemp mm -hmm. and from marijuana. Mm -hmm. I also got one for HPD, where I'm trying to establish sort of a generic category within a category. Mm. So instead of saying CBD, and you don't know if it comes from hemp or marijuana, it obviously comes from hemp. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're up and running. Um, I do not understand social media marketing. Oh. Not, uh, not a sliver of it. Um, I can barely log into Facebook. <laughs> so I'm really looking for someone or some people who can help with that part of it because the uh -huh. products are all done. Okay. We have the contract with the NIH. 
We actually have really? a license on wow. their patent. And the yeah. market's just going to explode and well, change your whole economy. Well, it is exploding, but you yeah. have to know how to promote mm -hmm. on social media because I'm not oh, yeah. really interested in store-to-store -store sales mm -hmm. because the margins get cut and you got to put this stuff up on consignment and they'll push it to the back. We're really interested in just the guy sitting in front of his computer who wants pure, good CBD. Yeah. I don't know how many of you know much about it. CBD. It's been an industry that's been growing for quite yeah. a while. You yeah, know, we've been uh, in it for five years. I have an interest in the manufacturer. Uh, I own part of that company, hmm. but I spun off the branding part because I consider the branding to be more important than the product because the product grows. Was it uh, yesterday, uh, ex-speaker John Bonner decided he was going to be an advocate now? Marijuana. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yes, really. Yes. All right. Very good. Congratulations. Go ahead. I got accepted at UCSD to sponsor a second team of uh, electronics and computer engineers to refine my Walker Wizard. Oh, okay. Right on, Dan. That'll help. That'll help. That's uh, going to be a great journey for you. So keep us posted. Did you decide to go with... Uh, did you decide to go with uh, the group you're talking to? Yeah, the mechanical engineers got the prototype working, and the oh. software guys are going to take over and refine it. So all right, all right, very cool. I can license it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Congratulations, Dan. <laughs> Let's see this one get to market. It's an exoskeleton, perhaps. Have you filed anything on it? Provisional. Okay, so you can mention what it is. You want to? Yeah, uh, for people who are so dependent on a walker or a wheelchair that they can't move without it. Yeah. If it's not nearby, they're stuck. So yeah. you'll press a button or possibly say, Alexa, bring me my walker. Mm -hmm. And they'll come to you. Uh, right on. Right on. Very cool. <coughs> my buddy bought a Tesla and you say summon and it pulls out the parking space and it up to you. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, kind of, kind of the same idea. I was at a restaurant last week and watched as a gentleman got up and he went over and he got his stro wife's stroller and brought it back to the table for her. And it's because they didn't want to leave it parked next to the table. As soon as I saw that, I realized there's a need for this. There is a need for this. Okay, let's keep this on track because we're going to have a speaker dial in here in about three minutes. Were you looking good on that end, Danny? Okay. Um, anybody else want to give us a little what happened this month? All right. Well, jot that down or ask me later or just go to YouTube and look up the 17 mistakes inventors make and you'll be able to download that presentation. And I invite you to do that, especially if you're new on this journey because 17 mistakes inventors make are avoidable. Very avoidable. So it's uh, 38 minutes. You get to learn what's like 35 years worth of experience here. Do you have any idea how long it goes, takes from non-provisional to getting issued your patent? Wow. It depends on the, how busy the art unit is that's looking at it. Um, uh, it can be as uh, short as 18 months, two years, and, my, and I'm going to ask for some more. Two years is usually about average. I've had things that have taken over seven years. So, uh, and then that's just to get to the first office action, which is then when you have to start prosecuting and actually describing things and answering their questions. Hey, next to Graham. <laughs> she thought she said they were shooting for a year. Oh, you got the ex accelerated, uh, ex uh, well, yeah, it depends on the art unit and how busy they are. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you do your own search or do you have a firm search it for you? No, I had somebody do it. Okay, good. That's good. I That's got a guy used to work at the patent office. Oh, okay. So ah. She's really expensive, but she had a, added a couple ideas. So. Oh, well, that's, that's a good thing. Well, folks, um, we are really lucky tonight because we're going to be listening, we're going to be hopefully seeing live uh, Andrew Krauss, who is the co-founder of Metright. Andrew Krauss ran a group like this for 15 years, if I'm correct, uh, and has been very with Stephen Key uh, and David Fedwa and the rest of that team there at InventRight. Um, how many of you have been in my office and we've talked and I've shown you the... Okay, well, you're welcome to come in. I'll tell you about that in a little bit later. But uh, many have come in and I have notes on the wall I've had for years. It's the um, five steps that are on the notes that are out on the table there. 
On my office, though, I've drawn this orange line that starts from the very beginning and it goes to right when you're done with the prototyping or the whatever the stages that you're going to bring to to present it. I have a big orange question. It says, who? Who are you going to bring this to? We've had some of you here that were with our uh, contest that actually even won the contest and it took a year and a half before you, they got a license agreement. I've seen things that have been done because they're simple enough and it takes months and months to get to where you finally close that deal. So who you're listening to tonight is uh, an expert on this, on licensing, and what he's going to reveal to you is how to make the hit list that's custom for your needs, your project. Um, the book, One Simple Idea, that uh, InventRight is based on, uh, at the end had a number, it used to be 1,800 companies in different categories. Uh, they now have 3,000 companies, and they'll, they'll make that list available to you. I'm, I think it's for charge now. Um, and I talked to Andrew. What brought this all about was he said, you know, what's more important is for your members, you guys, to learn how to make a custom list for your own needs for your project. Okay? So with that said, Danny, are we ready? Then let's give it a shot. Right, Andrew, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Can you see me? Uh, just a second. The audio will be important. <laughs> Go again, please. Testing. This is Andrew. We're close. All right. I click on the mic to make it ring. I can read. Testing. Testing. We might have Testing. to. One, two. Is it all on our end, Andrew? Can you hear us okay? I I can hear you guys. You can. Um, you don't just happen to have your mic muted by chance, do you? Yep. Still here. Stand by. Yeah. Keep talking if you like. We're not hearing you yet, Andrew. You know when you can hear me. Talk. If you can hear me, let me know. Talk. Maybe I'm his name. Hey. There you go. That, you hear me now? This is Andrew. There we go. All right. Thank you, Adrian. All right, cool. So you, can you guys see me okay, too? All right, good deal. Um, so I, just so I don't get any feedback personally, if you want to, uh, or AV guy, if you want to mute yourself on your side, that would be cool, because um, I'm getting some feedback. There you go. Okay, here we go. Perfect. All right, so before we get going here, um, Tonight, I'm going to talk about making your list of potential licensees when you're licensing. But before I do, I, I ran an inventors group in Silicon Valley for a really long time before I started InventRight with Stephen 18 years ago. Uh, at this point, we've had students in over 60 countries. And one thing I always did at my inventors group is made it really clear that there's two main paths you can go down. You can venture, which is a fancy way of saying start your own business and sell it yourself, or you can license. So tonight, I'm going to talk about making your list of potential licensees, and this applies to licensing, which just means selling your idea to a company. You're never really selling it. You're renting or you're leasing it, and then they're paying you a royalty quarterly, usually, for every unit they sell. So I know at every inventors group, there's always a few new people, so I always like explaining the difference between licensing and venturing. So I'm going to be talking about licensing, renting or leasing your product to a company and receiving a royalty for every unit they sell. No, they're not going to pay you within hours or days, but usually every quarter, every three months. So, um, Although I did have one student once where he got paid every month, which I just seems unwieldy to me. So tonight, I'm going to talk about making your list of companies to call. So when you're contacting companies to sell your idea to, 
Obviously, if you have 30 companies, that's 30 chances for success. If you have two companies, that's two chances for success. So I'm going to teach you to make a nice big list, and I'm going to share my screen with you, and we're going to surf the Internet a little bit showing you how to do this. So just some clarification on terms. You are the licensor as the inventor. The licensee is the company that licenses your product. Um, before I start sharing my screen, I want to talk about a few things, big mistakes that inventors make when they're licensing their products. So a lot of people misunderstand who they're going to contact. They think they're going to contact retailers. You don't license your product to retailers. Most retailers, it's changing a little bit. Some of them make their own products, their own house brand, but usually they're just trying to reduce costs on generic items. You're going to license to the companies that sell to the retailers, not the retailers themselves. Okay? And Another mistake that people make is they don't make a long list of retailers. So I'm going to show you how to f go to a retailer online and find the companies you're going to license to on their online website. But if you just go to Walmart.com and you don't go to Bed Bath & Beyond and Home Depot and another five retailers too, your list of companies is going to be smaller because there's going to be less companies selling each of those retailers. Some of them are going to be repeats. but there's going to be some companies selling in the Bed Bath & Beyond that aren't selling in Walmart or Target, right? So first mistake people make is to think that you're going to contact retailers to sell and license your product. You're not. You're going to contact manufacturers, brands that sell at retailers. Second mistake people make is they make a too short of a list of retailers. And I'm going to give you some illustrations on how people do that and how you can avoid that mistake. Third mistake that people make is thinking that you only have to contact companies if you have a shovel – I can only contact companies making shovels. You can contact companies in that general space. So that's the third mistake, contacting companies that are only making exactly pretty much what you're making. Those are giant mistakes that are going to make you give you a very, very small list of potential licensees, companies you can sell to. If you use the techniques that I'm going to show you here in just a second, uh, I'm going to share my screen. And here we go. So... Hold on, let me make this a little bit smaller here. Probably seeing double there. I'm going to fix that in a second. There we go. Okay, so I'm assuming you guys can can see my screen here. Um, and I'm just using Walmart as an example. They're not my favorite retailer, but they're a very big retailer. So let's get going here. So <clears throat> realize that when you're going online, the category on the website is the equivalent of the aisle in the store, right? So let's say I have this new innovative spatula. Okay. So I'm going to type in spatula. If I can spell spatula. There we go. All right. There we go. Okay. So I'm just typing in spatula on a retailer. It could be any retailer. It could be Home Depot, Bed Bath & Beyond, a smaller retailer. I'm just using Walmart as an example. Uh, let's see. Wow, this is the same. Okay. So I'm going to go click on this one right here. So when you type in spatula, you see all these companies selling spatulas, and your invention is a spatula. So we're trying to find companies selling spatulas. Now, you're going to expand that out. It doesn't have to be selling the exact same thing, like I said, but that would be the low-hanging fruit to go for first, right? So let's click on this one from Farberware. What am I looking for here? Well, I'm looking at the price point. I'm making observations. I'm paging down. I'm looking at the description. But what do we know immediately? We know immediately that this company, Farberware, which you guys have probably heard of, is in Walmart. So people ask me, like, well, how do I know they're a good company to call? Any company that is in a major retailer is big enough to call. You don't have to look up how many employees they have, what kind of dollar figures they do, none of that. It's a complete and utter waste of time. If they're in a major retailer, they are big enough to call. You're under no obligation to do a deal with them if, if you can't come up with the right terms or realize they're smaller than you thought. Okay, So what do we know immediately right now? Um, they're selling this silicone spatula. We know this company, it happens to be in the title, it isn't always, is Farberware. All right? And they're selling a spatula. It's also right here with the name of the company. And I think it's also down here where it says brand Farberware. So if you were doing a, a spatula, and you wanted to get into Walmart, licensing to Farberware, you know they're connected. You know there's somebody. They're in freaking Walmart right now. And yeah, I said freaking to get your attention just in case you guys are sleeping. So um, 
This is easy. This process of making your list of companies is something that baffles inventors, but it's one of the simplest things in the process to do. You just got to get used to doing it. So remember how I said different categories in a, an online site is the equivalent of an aisle in, in a physical store? So let's look at this. Home, kitchen and dining, cookware and tools, kitchen tools and gadgets. So let's go ahead and click on kitchen tools and gadgets. Now will take a second to come up here. And what do we see on the left side here? Well, we see all these categories, kitchen tool sets, spatulas, cooking spoons, graters, tongs, multi-function kitchen tools. Maybe your product fits into some of these categories too. And you can click on more categories. Oh, this makes it so easy, really, really easy. Now, if you go down here, you get even more. Look at all these brands. So these brands are the companies you're going to license to. It, makes it, it, is, it just makes it so easy. It, it was, in the old days, you had to go down to the store and turn over packages, and you can still do that, but it's so easy to do that online. You can also sort by color. You can sort by, wow, my God, you can sort by width. You can sort by length. I don't know what that means. Sometimes these categories don't make sense. If you had a spatula that was specifically stainless steel and you wanted to look at companies doing that, you could, you could sort it by that. Um, you could sort by price quite often. Let's say you have a really premium spatula, $25 plus, and you want to see the other companies doing premium spatulas where a company doing a $2 spatula might not want to do your spatula. There's so many ways to sort. Um, and then you can sort by ratings, see what people are saying about these companies, numbers of pieces. It just goes on and on, okay? So let's go ahead and click on spatulas here. If my computer works, there we go. Okay, so we have all these spatulas, um, and you kind of look and you kind of skim and, and gauge, like, would this one be right? Would that one be right? Let's click on this Rachel Ray one right here. And again, they're making it really easy. It's not always this easy. So, you know, because they're putting literally the name of the brand in three places now on this Walmart site, not all sites are going to be this easy. Rachel Ray here, Rachel Ray here, and then you page down, and they have this really nice detail section, brand Rachel Ray. Now, some sites, literally, you need to hover over a picture, and it, you can rotate it sometimes, and it doesn't say who the manufacturer is. And you could, but you can zoom in on it and you can see distributed by or manufactured by or you see some other indicator of who the company is. So don't always think it's going to be this easy as it is on walmart.com, okay? Don't be lazy. This is kind of cool. It's got a little notch right there. You can stick that on a pan. What is that telling you? Well, it's telling you they're doing somewhat innovative things, right? You can contact companies making regular spatulas, but um, they're doing somewhat innovative things. So let's go back here. Um, you do not want to just go with the big retailers, and you don't want to just go with a few retailers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a story here, and then I'm going to illustrate it by doing a search. Um, I, ta I was talking to a student a while back. I, don't, I have 19 employees now. I don't do the coaching anymore. But I used to be our only coach in the early days, and not that long ago. I was the only coach. Um, and I had this student who was on the East Coast. And I'm on the West Coast. And he was working on a sporting good product. And I said, what are, you, what are you thinking with your list of retailers you're going to look at for potential licensees? And he said, well, he rattled off some retailers. And I'm like, I literally hadn't heard of several of them. I rattled off a few. He hadn't heard of a few. And I'm trying to illustrate the point that you cannot just go – with the local retailers like, oh, well, there's a big five and a Dick's Sporting Goods near me, so I'll just search on those places. No, you're hurting yourself. I'm going to illustrate this very, very clearly on why you don't want to do that. Now, it's not always going to be this easy, but in this case, I got on with a student, and I said, well, let's do a search. I was on Skype with them, just like I am with you guys, and I typed in list of major, here I already did the search, list of major U.S. sporting good retailers. Now, this won't always work for all categories, but you should always try it for your category first. So, and I came up with this Wikipedia article. I'm noticing this is, this is a long time ago, but I'm noticing this site too. I'm going to click on this Wikipedia article. He mentioned three or four. I mentioned four or five. Look how many 
major U.S. sporting good retailers there are. So what, what happens if you're not searching on these companies' site, sites, you are missing manufacturers, brands that are selling on these, in these major retailers. You're missing the boat. And your list of potential licensees might be five instead of 30. And if you have 30 companies, you have 30 chances for success. If you have five companies, you have five chances for success. I can't think of a more clear way of illustrating that you need to make sure you understand all the retailers in the space of your invention and then find as many companies as you can that you think might be a right match. Very, very important. Don't skip that. Don't just go with the two retailers you know in your hometown. Now, our international students, they don't make this mistake because they're in Germany or they're in Australia. We have tons of students in Australia. They don't make these assumptions. They always do this because they don't know who the retailers are. They don't even know two. Maybe they know Walmart or something, right? And they just don't know the retailers in the U.S. So I find that our international students do a better job because they don't make assumptions. So what I'm saying is, do not make assumptions about the major retailers in the industry of your invention. Okay, because look how many are here. It's crazy. Um, so I gave you that example. So let me go back here. I'm just going to go to a blank page to get your focus. Um, the other major, well, I'm going to go to the spatulas actually, because we can probably find some examples here. If you're doing a barbecue spatch, if you're doing a spatula for the kitchen, right? Can you only license the companies selling spatulas? There might be companies that are selling other kitchen gadgets, cutting boards, other kitchen gadgets. You look at their product line, they're not selling a spatula. They didn't want to get into it, it too generic. But they look at yours and they're like, oh, finally, we want to get into kitchen spatulas. Now, do you want to contact uh, companies making um, soccer cones when you're doing a spatula? No. But a company making a cutting board? or a company making something else in that space, a pizza cutter, like right here. Um, uh, this is an angled spatula. I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't even know what this thing is. It's a scraper tool. You know, they're doing a scraper tool. Could you call them and try to license your spatula? Absolutely you can. Absolutely. So that's another major point. And I, I repeat myself a lot because I really like people to walk away and not forget things because, you know, you don't, when you're talking, somebody's talking at you real quick, you don't remember everything. Do not feel like your list needs to be of companies that are selling exactly the same thing or very, very close. Now, you might have the A-listers. Hey, they're selling spatulas. Okay, that's really clear. Oh, there's a company selling pizza cutters. I could contact them too. And you're going to get more in-depth with these. This initial search, when you find Rachel Ray or like who makes this pizza cutter, Bradshaw International. You're going to then Google Bradshaw International. You're going to find their website. You're going to look at their entire product line. And you go, would a spatula fit in with their product line? They may or may not be doing one now. Maybe you look and they're only doing pizza-related stuff. And you're like, nah, for my spatula, it's for this and this. Maybe not, but maybe so. So you should always go to the company's website, whether it's Rachel Ray or Farberware or Mainstays or um, – Bradshaw International or any of these others. And, you know, we went over here and we clicked on brands. They're making it so easy for you guys. Now, you could click on Rachel Ray. Let's do that. And you can see all her stuff at Walmart, but she might have tons of other products on her website. If we went to rachelray.com, which I'm not going to do right now, and you're like, wow, well, at Walmart she sells this stuff, but she's got this in Bed Bath & Beyond and this here and this there. Another thing you can do, too, is you can look at a particular product, and you can, you can get the name of it. You can just Google it, and you'll say, oh, damn, that same thing is on Target, and they're in all these other places as well. Okay? So um, a few other tips, and these are kind of general tips. If a company is making high-quality products, that's what they make. If you want to make some cheap little cheesy thing, and they do nothing but high-quality stuff, they're probably not the right company. Make the find a company that does cheap little cheesy stuff. If they're doing really cheap stuff, don't go, well, I want them to sell my premium $50 spatula when they're doing nothing but $1.99, $3.99 products, right? So what's the big goal here? What are we trying to do? We're trying to make a list of 20 to 30 companies. When I first started out with Steven and we were doing coaching, 
Um, I would say 10, and then I upped it to 15, and then I upped it to 20, and then I started saying 10 to 20 to 30, and our students were able to do it. Not in every case. There might be some products some where it's like your list, it's a specialized product, what have you, it might be only 5 or 8 or 12 or 15, but the reason why most people don't make a list or 20 or 30 because they're not doing what I'm showing you how to do here. If you do this, for most products, you can find 20 to 30. Now, another tip in this area is you should be doing the search on how many potential licensees you have before you even work on your project to determine if you want to work on it. Because you might look, take a look around and realize there's some industries, some categories, wow, I'm only going to have two or three companies that I can license to. I don't like those odds. 30 companies is way better than two or three. Now, you might decide, well, I love it anyway. I don't care. I'm going to make file my PPA. I'm going to do my sales. I'm going to do all this stuff. And I don't care there's only three companies because I think this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Now, it's kind of a rookie inventor move because if you look at another product you have and you realize there's 30 and you still want to work on one with two or three, it's kind of amateur. Now, you might say, well, I'm not being amateur. I'm cognizant of this. I want to do it anyway. But at least you should be aware of it. As long as you're aware of it, you still want to make that decision. But I wouldn't be do making that decision on every project you work on because it's a, you're dramatically reducing your chances of success. So I don't know if we, have, if we can do open Q&A um, because I think my time is up. Uh, I, so if you want to unmute, you know, I'd be willing to answer any questions you guys have. And our AV guy, if he wants to, um, if he wants to repeat the question since he's near the mic, we can do that. Yeah, I can hear Adrian at the stage. That's crazy. No, can you if you could repeat any question, Adrian? That would be great. Um, people focus too much on the royalty rate. I don't, you know, it, it's it's a combination of the price of the product. Usually, the royalty is on the wholesale price, the price that the company sells to the retailer for, because that's easy to track. But if, the, if you get a 20% royalty rate and they're only going to sell 1,000 units a year, that's not very impressive. If you get a 5% royalty rate, which is the most common for consumer products, and they're going to sell 400,000 units a year, that's a lot more impressive, right? So when people ask that question, which is a great question, what you should be asking is, what's the good royalty rate, but what's, what's the volume that the company can do? And that is an interview process when you interview the company you're going to be asking them what kind of volume they can do. And there's ways of calculating and making assumptions on that, too. So a 5% royalty, a 10% royalty, it really doesn't matter. You have to combine that with the price of the product and the volume they're going to sell. So don't just say what's the royalty rate. Add that together with the volume they can do. Sometimes people think, like, oh, I'm going to sell it myself because I can make a 25% profit margin. But you selling it on your website, selling 1,000 units a year, getting a 25% profit margin, comparing that to licensing it, and them selling half a this year at 5%, you do the numbers. You can do the numbers yourself, given what I just told you. And you can see the difference. So good question. Very good question. Very good question. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm wondering if you can license a product if you don't have a patent. Uh, that's the name of the book, actually. The end of the question <laughs> is, can you license a product without a patent? Yeah, yeah I'm I'm part part of a little earlier with, with, with the past. Really, really more advanced, advanced with the intellectual property. property. Um, um, all, 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 all of our advanced 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 What's, What's the, the point? point? You get you the get warm and fuzzy inside and protected, but it doesn't do you any good whatsoever. whatsoever. 
So, so you want to file your business, you're ready to start calling the next day, the next day, the next, day, next, day, the next, day, next week. week. That, that way, way you get the benefit of the whole year. You do the three or four months, months, you know, know the idea of the play, and then you get, get the get company, company to pay for the cash. cash. Now, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't file, file it. They give, they give you the money, money you give you them your attorney, attorney, and your attorney reference the provision. That is a very common way, very low-risk way of protecting yourself without throwing a tenor to the grand Dave, you yeah, another question? It's not a patentable idea. What if there's no there's no patent? It's just a new product. If it's not a patentable idea, it's doggy dog, yeah, yeah. first one to market. And, can, you uh, sell it? can you license that? So can you license it? Well, like your data survey, it's like 55% of When they do a deal, the company doesn't file a patent, and the inventor doesn't care either, and they still pay the royalty on a patent like this. You they could most definitely, definitely like non-patent like like as well. Absolutely. Sure, sure. Yes, Matt. Uh, with a hat. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, any recommendations on uh, creating a hit list for a light-up hat? Did you hear that, Andrew? He, Matt's got a hat that lights up. Come here. Cool, huh? Very cool. You see that? I can't, I can't see it. Uh, well, the, 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 the brim, the brim lights up. The two of these together. You should go to the middle. Yeah, yeah. you're just walking out with lights. Yeah. Well, point is, the brim lights up really nice, and uh, Matt's asking, got any suggestions on where he should go to license a hat that lights up? Yeah. yeah okay. okay. Understood. Um, you have to, you have to say, well, there's companies selling hats right now. That's a good example. Just about anybody can get made hat get hats made overseas, right? So a company selling fun novelty products could make that. They don't have to be making hats for light. You have to break it out. Is this for camping? Is it for a ball game? Is it just for the average Joe? It's working on his car. <coughs> What's the use? Sometimes you have multiple lists. Maybe it's great for camping, but it's also great for just everyday use. So you might find companies, you might go to REI, which is a camping store, or camping world, and find a list there. And then you go to another uh, website that has gadgets and gizmos. Maybe you go to Walmart, see people selling lights, different kinds of lights, keychain lights. They could sell this as well. So you could really expand it out that way. Does that help? A comment came out of the audience that this is a perfect product for raves. <laughs> yeah, music festivals. The music festivals. You gotta go to Hot Topic and Spencer. Yeah. All right, Bye. Hot Topic and Spencer were comments that came back. Now, the other thing that I suggest you do is go to Google, Google Images, not regular Google. Go to Google Images, type in hat with light. 99% of inventors I talk to do not do that. Google Images is your friend. It'll show you what's really in the marketplace. Some things will link to blogs. Some things will link to websites where the products are being sold. You have no idea what's truly out there until you search Google Images. So you can do a regular Google search and then click on the Images button. You will find, you should do that every time you come up with a new idea. Like, what's the question? Costco again. You don't you don't license the retailers. You license the manufacturers to sell it. Exactly. One more. Okay. Well, but you've had oh, one. So if somebody hasn't had a question yet. Oh, once you have your list, what's the best way to start contacting? Just go on the website, and, and then who would you contact? Best way to contact them once you have a list, go on the website, call them direct. Uh, if they have a page on their site, do that. Call them direct, and LinkedIn message them. All three. Did you get that? Yeah. Say it again, please. If they have a submission page on their site, go ahead and use it. But you can also contact them. I usually like to contact the marketing manager for a certain product line when you're calling them. And then also you should try to contact and connect with people at the company through LinkedIn. 
Do not send them your product unsolicited. Always ask permission. And don't assume they're the right person. Say, would you be the right person or could you direct me the right person? And then if they say, oh, yeah, you can send it to me, or if they say, no, send it to Sally, Sally Joe, then send it to Sally Joe. Do not spam people on LinkedIn. Do not do that. Always get permission first. Same thing when you're calling companies. Always get permission first. In fact, the buyer is the person you're trying to contact? What's that? No, 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 never the buyer. The buyer, the buyer is here to reduce costs. They're buying materials. It's, it's the marketing manager. You don't contact the buyer. Common misperception. Good question. That wraps up our time because we have another guest speaker tonight. So let's give Andrew Krauss a big hand and thanks. Great job, Andrew.